Hello and welcome to another Earth Science Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Buss, and we're going to talk about the composition of the atmosphere. So, here we go. Nitrogen is the major component of Earth's atmosphere. It is 78% of the atmosphere. Nitrogen doesn't do anything in our body. We breathe it in, we breathe it out, um, and it just it just does not affect us. Um, for it to be useful, it actually has to be fixed by bacteria in the soil um, to be utilized and, you know, help make up amino acids and, and building blocks, part, parts of uh, organic compounds. Next, most abundant gas in the atmosphere is actually oxygen, 20, almost 21 percent of the atmosphere is composed of oxygen, and that's a direct byproduct of photosynthesis, which we'll talk about in our next slide. Past that, there's not a lot left. Argon, a little less than 1 percent. Argon, a noble gas, Again, inert, not doing anything, uh, for us any anyway. Now all that's left is this really little sliver right there, and that needs to get broken up. So if you break that up, we're looking at a really, really small fraction of the atmosphere now. Carbon dioxide makes up 0.038%. That's the fourth most abundant gas in the atmosphere. It's an important one. That is the biggest greenhouse gas, or at least it's the most abundant greenhouse gas. So that plays a huge role in our climate, regulating the climate. All right, so those are the four I'm going to test you on. In order from most to the least abundant, nitrogen, oxygen, argon, carbon dioxide, and then I guess if we go a little further, just at least say these, neon and noble gas, helium, methane, CH4, another greenhouse gas, krypton and hydrogen, all very, very small components of the atmosphere. All right, so we mentioned that oxygen is the second most abundant gas in the atmosphere, so let's talk about how, how it got there. So the chemical reaction that you need to know is photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is where you take carbon dioxide and water and this really isn't too tricky to, to remember. Just think, you know, if you got a house plant, what does the house plant need, right? You need to water the thing to keep it alive, and then it does breathe in what you breathe out. It breathes in carbon dioxide. And it's able to take carbon dioxide and water, and it needs energy from the sun, so you got to put the plant in the light. And it's able to take those basic elements and put them together to form sugar. In this case, it's glucose C6H12O6. And a byproduct of this reaction, the plant is getting rid of excess oxygen from this reaction. The plant will use some oxygen in uh, cellular respiration, which we'll talk about next, but it will produce an excess of this and it'll, it'll release oxygen into the atmosphere. There's the 20% of the atmosphere that we talked about in the previous slide. All right, so now let's look at cellular respiration, which is just the opposite of photosynthesis and cellular respiration. You take the C6H12O6, you take sugar, and you take the oxygen, and you burn it. And this one's not too tricky to remember either. What do you do? You have to eat food, you have to eat, and you have to breathe. And you breathe, you breathe in oxygen. So you eat, and you breathe, you take it, the sugar, you take the oxygen, and you're going to get the products which are the, the reactants for photosynthesis. You're going to get carbon dioxide and you're going to get water as byproducts. And what do you want? You want this usable energy. That's why you're eating and breathing so you can burn the food that, that you ate. So cellular respiration, the reverse equation for photosynthesis. Yes, just, just to review, I'll just say these processes again. Carbon dioxide plus water plus solar energy yields glucose sugar and oxygen and then cellular respiration is the opposite. Glucose, sugar, plus oxygen yields carbon dioxide and water and usable energy. 